Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. And in today's episode, we're going to start off by talking about some Philadelphia Phillies that could be all-stars this year. Yeah, we're drawing closer to the all-star game, and there certainly should be some good representation from the Fightins. Also, we'll preview the Phils Red Sox series that starts later on the night. What are the Phils going to do up there at Fenway Park? And what are the pitching matchups looking like? Also, we had a little bit of... Um, hacker time going on in MLB Twitter yesterday. And we'll also talk about the trades that were rumored via the hacks. What a weird day. We'll get into all of it on today's episode. You are locked on Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Yes, this is indeed Locked On Twitter. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I always tell you, but please, if you have not yet, make sure you're rating and reviewing wherever you consume your podcast. Subscribe into the YouTube. If you enjoy our content, that's the number one way to let us know that you do. So uh, it really helps us out. I would appreciate if you did that if you haven't already. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a deposit match up to $100. So go ahead and check out prize picks. We're going to talk some all-star game stuff because we had an off day yesterday. There's no game to react to. I already recapped the London series. If you missed that, it's in yesterday's episode. So you can go back and hear me break down everything that happened over across the pond in the Philly split series with the Mets. But before we get to a preview of the next series, I do want to take some time and give some flowers to some Phillies who could be heading to the all-star game this year. A couple potential first-time all-stars couple big-time repeat all-stars, a lot of stuff to keep a focus on. I would say that the Phillies are going to be looking at, rightfully so, as the best team in baseball at this point, uh, four to five all-stars, right? The last one's going to be kind of iffy, mainly because bullpen pitchers are such a crapshoot when it comes to how they're picked for the all-star game. But let's start with category one, which are the obvious. Well, I guess there's four obvious players that should be at the All-Star game for the Philadelphia Phillies. Bryce Harper is going to be the National League starter at first base in the All-Star game. He's going to be, short of knock on wood injury, and that goes for all these guys, which please, Lord, do not let that happen. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. Bryce Harper has done everything he needs to to be the best first baseman in the National League this year, which is insane considering he picked up the position midseason last year. And now in his first full year, he's going to be the all-star starter at that position for the National League. Like, that's crazy. That's nuts. That just shows you how good this guy is. It can't be overstated how incredible Bryce Harper is. So there's your first one. All-star count up to one. The second lock player. And, yeah, third base is not a strong position in the National League this year. Austin Riley's having a down year down there in Atlanta. Outside of him, there's not exactly that many premier third baseman. You look at Nolan Arenado. He's been struggling in St. Louis. Alec Bohm is clearly by far and away the best third baseman in the National League to this point of the season. He should be the all-star starter at third base for the National League. So I feel pretty confident in Harper at first, Bohm at third. Bohm has been incredible, great RBI guy, not that much power this year as far as home runs, and he's still there with RBIs. He's been clutch. I know he's been slumping lately, but he's done enough to this point to basically secure himself as the all-star starter for the National League. we still got a ways to go. I know this might feel like jumping the gun, but as we draw closer, the articles are starting to come out about predicting, and I had a free day here, so I figured might as well go ahead and let you guys know. So those are the first two. I feel very confident that those two guys will be representing the Phillies on the National League All-Star team. I also feel pretty confident that there's two starting pitchers that are going to be representing the Phillies on the National League All-Star team. The first is Zach Wheeler, who is the favorite for Cy Young right now, has had an outstanding year. His extension, which hasn't kicked in yet, but that he signed this offseason seems smarter by the day. Like everything with Zach Wheeler is great right now. He leads the National League in a bunch of different categories. He is probably going to be your National League All-Star starter. He's probably going to start the All-Star game on the bump, which is 
almost unfair to his teammate, who is another guy that should be a starting pitching nod for the all-star team in the National League. That is Ranger Suarez. Both those guys are going to be on the all-star team. Wheeler, no doubt. Suarez, no doubt. They've been insane. You could argue they're two of the top five pitchers in baseball this year. That gets you on the all-star team when we talk about starting pitchers. So we're already up to four, and I haven't even had to rack my brain a little bit and go through positions of maybes and anything like that. That's why I feel pretty confident, four to five. Uh, where do you get to five? Well, we'll get to that when we get to the bullpen, because like I said, it's kind of a tricky spot for determining who's going to be an all-star. And there have been some really good bullpen arms in the National League this year that you just might not think about, because if they don't throw in a series against the Phillies, or if they're like a West Coast team and you never watch them, you might be like, oh, well, I don't. I don't really know about these guys. I'll talk you through a little bit of it uh, in a second, but let's just run through the rest of the position players and starters. JT Romito has been really solid at catcher, as he always is. I think William Contreras is going to be the all-star starter out of the Milwaukee Brewers at catcher for the National League. Could JT get on there as a catching option? Absolutely. But if he did, it would be more of a legacy pick than he's had an outstanding, crazy year. Not that he's been bad. He has not been bad. He just hasn't been typical JT Romuto all-star catcher. And maybe he will still make it. That's a maybe. Uh, Bryson Stott at second base. Maybe as a, a bench player on the all-star team. The problem for him is Luis Arise is incredible. And he is going to be the all-star starter at second base. Formerly of the Marlins, now of the Padres. So, yeah, you're kind of stuck there unless Bryce Stott's going to be a depth guy. And he didn't have the greatest starts of the year, so his overall numbers don't look amazing. Shortstop, Trey Turner's missed too much time. Edmundo Sosa hasn't played enough. Uh, not going to get anybody at shortstop, unfortunately. And the outfield has been light on production, very light on production. Castellanos is certainly not an all-star. I know how the fan base feels about him. He's a great player still. Cold start to the year. Has not been very good for the Phillies. Not an all-star. Yohan Rojas, not enough offense. Not going to be an all-star. Brandon Marsh, not. I. You know what? I was big on the Brandon Marsh all-star train early on in the year. Little injury here. Uh, platoon time there. They're not really having him as a full-time left fielder, which everything the Phillies are doing seems to be working. So I'm not going to argue with them and say, well, why in the world are you not playing Brandon Marsh more? What, just so he can make the all-star team? Whatever they're doing is winning them ball games. Unfortunately, Brandon Marsh, not an all-star this year. So the only kind of iffy guy is JT Romito, and I guess Bryson Stott maybe as far as other position players. Starters, you can make a case in another new year that Aaron Nola should be on the all-star team, that Christopher Sanchez, if he keeps up what he's doing, is a quiet back-end like all-star candidate. But I don't see them putting any more than two starting pitchers from the same team on the all-star team. I just don't see voters doing that. I don't see – the league doing that like I don't think it's realistic I think they're capped out at two like not there's no regulation that they're capped out at two I just think the checks and balances of the voting process will have them capped out at two so unfortunately Nola Sanchez probably not Walker missed a month of the season not really gonna have the performance either so that's where we're at with all of those guys now let's talk about the bullpen because the bullpen is very interesting there are two guys in the Philadelphia Phillies bullpen that absolutely have had all-star caliber starts to the season. Matt Strom is the first one. Matt Strom has been one of the best relievers in baseball, and there is no debate. He has been a monster at working out of tough situations. If he gets a clean inning, good luck. He has been as steady as they come, not just on the Phillies, but everywhere across baseball. Matt Strom absolutely should be an all-star. If he is not... It is a major, major snub. Relievers, again, kind of tricky because there's just so darn many of them. And it's so hard for everybody to evaluate them well because you don't see all of them all that often. And that's just the nature of the position. That's why we're doing this separate. Does Matt Schraub deserve to be an all-star? 100%. And a guy that deserves to join him? Jeff Hoffman. Jeff Hoffman has been locked down since the Phillies brought him up. Last year, after throwing BP to Bryce Harper, Jeff Hoffman has been unbelievable. He deserves an all-star nod as well. That would put the Phillies at six, maybe seven all-stars if Strom and Hoffman make it. But normally you don't get two relievers from the same team. And 
again, relievers are kind of tricky. So those are the two guys that deserve it. Other guys in the bullpen that are kind of in contention. Ryan Kirkering missed a little bit of time. I, he's been very good. I don't think he has the name recognition or the numbers to do it yet. Jose Alvarado has been really good, but not all-star good when there's so many great arms coming out of pens in the National League. So, unfortunately, I don't think he'll make it. And outside of him, I mean, Soto, no. Sir Anthony Dominguez, no. Jose Ruiz, no. Um, I'm just thinking Spencer Turnbull kind of is in a tough spot because – he started the year as a starter and then moved to the pen. Hasn't gotten that much work compared to other guys that were either starting the whole time or in the pen the whole time. He's been so good, but he also just he won't be able to make the all-star team, I don't think, just because of restrictions of spots and the weird start to the year for him as far as what his role is. So, again, running down, potential all-stars for the Phillies. Baum is a lock. Harper's a lock. Wheeler's a lock. Suarez is a lock. And then you have a couple iffy guys. JT iffy. Bryson Stott, more iffy, but I guess still in the conversation. Second base isn't great for the National League. Uh, and Matt Strom and Jeff Hoffman both deserve to be there, but again, I'll say it one more time. Relievers are tricky. So that's what I'm feeling about the Phillies All-Star chances. We'll revisit this in a couple weeks as we draw closer to the All-Star game, see if anything changes, see if we get any vote results back and stuff once fans start voting and we start hearing things from everybody. But just thought I'd take the time to tell you who are some guys that deserve to represent the Phillies and let me know if I missed anybody in the comments. Let me know if you disagree with any of like my lock picks or guys that I think deserve to be there. The Phillies are the best team in baseball. They deserve to be heavily rep represented. And even if it's just the lock guys, they're going to have at least four all-stars. That's a pretty darn good sign that things are going right. But they need things to continue to go right. And they start a series tonight in Boston against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. How are the Phillies going to take care of business up there? Well, we'll break it down next as we continue today's episode. And let's talk about Ibotta first because Ibotta is – Awesome. I, let me tell you what I'm doing, right? Coming up, I'm going to the Outer Banks on my brother's bachelor party. And you know how expensive it is to travel anywhere in the summer? You got to get groceries. You got to get drinks. You got to do travel. You got to do all the expenses that come with the trip. And this is one vacation for me. Some people go on multiple vacations in the summer. Congrats on your success. Maybe you're going down the shore. Bottom line is you're buying a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different stores, grocery, clothes, all of those things. Well, Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. Could have paid for a lot of the opportunities that we have to do stuff down in the Outer Banks. I mean, it takes care of a lot of stuff for you. Other apps, don't, they give you points, right? They don't give you straight cash. Well, Ibotta is like the Randy, Mar Randy Marsh. Randy Moss, um, these apps, it, it gives you straight cash, homie. You can go ahead and cash that out to your bank account, PayPal, gift cards, all of that stuff. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers. Stuff like Macy's, Lowe's, Sephora, you know all the names of all the stores. Right now, Abata is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Abata as well. You just use the code Locked On MLB when you register. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Abata app to start earning cash back and use code Locked On MLB. Again, that's uh, Ibotta. I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Player App Store and use code locked on MLB. Let's also talk about prize picks because the fills are back in action. You can build yourself a winning lineup and make some money. Prize picks is super easy to use. You can turn $10 into $1,000 in a snap. It's so easy. It's just in a single game watching your favorite sports. You can do that. You can make prize picks lineups in as little as 60 seconds. And that's for like the average person like me. If you're smart, try doing less than 60 seconds. It's not that hard. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stats projections and you're locked in. They don't have to be the same player. So like for tonight, for example, you think Bryce Harper is going to hit a big home run at Fenway? You can go ahead and take his more on his home run stat. If you think you're going to get a bunch of strikeouts, well, you could take more on any pitcher in the matchup or any pitcher across baseball. It doesn't just have to be Phil's Red Sox. And also, I'll tell you what, I think June Schwarber, back at a place where he used to play up there in Boston, I think he's going to have himself a night. So look at Kyle Schwarber's over in hits. I like all of those picks. Gave you three, maybe four, depending on how many of those you take. You can make some good money on that with prize picks. 
You can also do basketball. Finals going on right now. Stanley Cup finals are going on in hockey. It's not just baseball. It's all sports, all teams. Prize Picks makes it super easy to go ahead and find a way to uh, earn a little bit of money while watching these games. So what you got to do, right? You got to download the app today. And you have to, you got to use code locked on MLB because they're going to give you, when you use that code, a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today. If you use code locked on MLB, you'll get a first deposit match up to $100. Check out prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Time to preview Phil's Red Sox from up there at beautiful, historic. Fenway Park and the Red Sox are a solid team. They are 33 and 33 this year, dead even at 500. So all the eh, Phillies can't beat teams over 500 are going to have a field day with this series, I'm sure, even though the Red Sox have been a solid team. I will tell you, the Red Sox are coming off a four game series against the White Sox in the Sox match up there. Uh, it would have been a fun one to talk about for our friends on Locked On Red Sox and Locked On White Sox, but they split a four game series with the White Sox. This team can beat anybody. I mean, they went ahead and took one from the Braves before that series with the White Sox, but they can also lose to anybody. That's kind of what a 500 team is. So it's matchup dependent. It's pitching matchup dependent. The Phillies are the significantly better team. They're going to be probably favored in all these games, and they're especially going to be favored tonight because Zach Wheeler's on the mound. We know how good he's been. He's going to be facing off against Cutter Crawford. Uh, Crawford, a 3-5-1 ERA and 74 in a third innings pitch. He's been pretty darn good. 2-5, and five, though. He hasn't got a lot of run support. A righty, we know the Phillies like facing righty pitchers. Plays more to the strength of their lineup. Game two is going to have Christopher Sanchez on the mound. We're now past the point of like, oh, okay, hopefully Christopher Sanchez gives you one of his good starts. He's just been really good. He's got a 2-7-1 ERA and 66 in a third innings pitch. And the Phillies get to see an old friend. Nick Pavetta is on the mound in game two for the Red Sox. He's got a 3-4 ERA, but a .94 whip. He hasn't been allowing a lot of runners on base. His problem is, is he's allowed eight home runs. Christopher Sanchez still has only allowed a single home run this year. The Phils are favored once again in that matchup. And then the final pitching matchup of the series will be Aaron Nola, who was outstanding last time out. He pitched the final game before the Phillies headed to London. So he wrapped up that Brewer series and, and the Phillies shut out the Brewers in that game, largely thanks to Aaron Ola. He's 8-2 and two with 2.77 ERA. When I say that, I think back to that all-star segment we just did. Dude, he might make it too. He's been unbelievable. He's going to be facing Tanner Houck, another righty, a 1.91 ERA. He's been outstanding for them. Uh, 0.92 whip, 85 innings pitch. That's going to be a heck of a matchup. Right now, the ESPN analytics on that final game, the Thursday night game of the series, is 50-50 which you don't see that very often. That'll be a great one from up at Fenway Park. A little note on the series while we're on the topic of time, because I just brought up the Thursday night game. All of these are night games. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all 7, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you don't get that typical uh, end final game of the series day game. No, nope, the Phillies are playing all night games, which I don't know if they'll like that coming off of, the games in England where they were point, their time was kind of messed up. They had the off day. It may be nice just to be in a little bit more of a routine. This is a great opportunity for the Phillies to go out. And honestly, for this series, you should take two or three, no doubt. Like, there should be no reason why you should not win this series against the Boston Red Sox. You're the significantly better team. Their offense for the Red Sox has not exactly been outstanding this year. They're, they hung 14 on the White Sox last week, but – I don't know. Nine on the Braves, too, is pretty impressive. A lot of times they're around four runs, three runs. I don't know. They're just a very – I'll tell you what. The Boston Red Sox are a very average baseball team. I saw some stat recently about them where they were like 30 and 30. They hit 30 and 30 was their record this year. Last year they hit that mark. The year before they hit that mark, it was either that or 31 and 31. They're just always kind of – right in the middle of the pack, which some people would call mediocre. I'm going to give them more respect than that, but that's what this era of Red Sox baseball has been. The Phillies are not mediocre. They should take care of business. So I feel good about the Phillies heading into this series. I feel good about them tonight for sure with Zach Wheeler on the mound. And then you just got to win one of the last two in some tougher pitching matchups to find a way to get that done. So those are my thoughts on the Phillies Red Sox series. We'll break down game one and react to that tomorrow after tonight's game. But uh, hopefully – it goes the way I think it's going to, and maybe, hey, 
Could there be another sweep? No, I don't want to get too hasty. Just win the series. Coming up, we're going to wrap up with a weird day on MLB Twitter <laughs> yesterday, thanks to one very annoying hacker. We'll get into that coming up as we wrap up today's episode. But before we do that, I got to tell you about FanDuel. I mean, summertime, it means baseball. And it means the NBA Finals. And it means the Stanley Cup Finals. And you could bet it all on FanDuel. What more could you want than that? You want everything in the same place? Well, right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet everything from the Finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. You know what I do? I keep an eye on the Finals. You can put $5 on any bet, and you can get that $200 in bonus bets. So maybe, just a thought here, Boston's up 2-0 in the Finals. If they win Game 3, I don't believe any team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in an NBA Finals, or maybe in like most playoff series. It, it's not going to happen if they go 3-0, so maybe make a $5 bet on Boston to be the NBA champion. And then, even though the odds aren't going to be great, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets with that winning bet. It's super easy. So go ahead and check that out. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, weird day on Twitter yesterday because Buster only got hacked his X account or Twitter account or whatever. Some dude got on there and was just posting random stuff, like he was just some random hacker that had nothing to do with baseball or whatever. And then, of course, people start DMing the person who had control of Buster Olney's account and tell them all the MLB rumors, like this player might get traded here, say this is going to happen, say this is going to happen, say that's going to happen. There were like DMs of someone saying, say Shohei is getting banned from baseball and going to a life in prison. But the one that affected the Phillies, a lot of people freaked out. Luis Robert, uh, outfielder for the Chicago White Sox, already been said that he's going to be on the trade block this year. <laughs> Buster Olney's account, not Buster Olney, tweeted out that he was heading to the Philadelphia Phillies. What that will say is that there is perception out there that that could be a possible move. We already knew that. But this is where social media gets even trickier. I know so many people had a heart attack over seeing that if he didn't had already if he didn't already realize that Buster only had been hacked. And that's a tough thing, right? You can catch a fake account a lot easier than you can catch a hacked account. So this is kind of a tough time. Thank goodness it's June and not right before the trade deadline. That would have been mayhem. And hopefully Buster only gets control of his account again soon. I know Buster well. Uh, I talked to him, what, like a week and a half ago. I was texting with him. So, like, I do know from my interactions with him that he's kind of an off-the-grid guy. He sent me pictures of, like, being out in the wilderness in Wyoming and stuff like that. So, uh, hopefully he can figure that out. And hopefully we can stop getting, like, random tweets from some random guy who doesn't know anything about baseball who's just rewording things that people are DMing him. But if you saw tweets from Buster Olney yesterday, they're all just fake hack tweets. I do like the excitement that I saw about Luis Robert. And it also tells me how the Phillies fans would react if this trade actually went down. It would be a largely positive reaction. At some point when we get closer to the deadline, we're going to dive deeper into that move. But just want to put a warning out there in case you weren't yet aware by the time you watch this podcast episode, all that stuff from Buster only yesterday was completely fake and a hack. And unfortunately, it led to a lot of crazy stuff being said on uh, baseball Twitter. That's the uh, the pitfalls of social media and doing business and everything like that. So be vigilant out there. Don't worry. Locked on Phillies. No fake tweets from us. Everything you see from our Twitter account or my Twitter account at Thomas 975 all real. So if I tweet out the Luis Roberts getting traded to the Phillies, okay, no, you probably shouldn't believe me because I don't have sources like that. But just keep an eye out. All right, folks. Last thing we need is people believing that a trade has been made and then saying something about a player that was moved in the trade, according to reports, and that player stays here, and now the fan base is mad at him. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff can go wrong. So trust but verify, and maybe these days on social media, verify twice. But for the rest of the day, all you got to do is uh, sit down and watch the Phils take on the Red Sox. The 710 up from Fenway Park should be a fun series and another great ballpark to watch games in. A beautiful thing baseball is that's all for today's episode thank you so much for checking us out again we're part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and please make sure like i told you at the front 
uh, rate, review, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked on Phillies. It really helps me out. I appreciate everyone who's done that already. It's the number one way to say thank you. So if you're going to do that, I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. I'll talk to you tomorrow on our next episode of Locked on Phillies.